rock is cooking. Now I came on here, MJ came on here after week one, and MJ said he was not happy. MJ came on here after week two and said he was not happy about the Tennessee Titans performance. He came on here after week three and said he was not happy about the Tennessee Titans performance. But here, on week five, after the fourth game, MJ is quite happy with the Tennessee Titans performance. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the team we have been waiting for in Tennessee for quite some time. This is the performance that I've been waiting to see from this team all season long because I knew, I believed that they were capable of this. I believed it, but I needed to see it. And now we have seen it. And this was with all of the players that we had on that COVID-19 list, that damned coronavirus disease 2019 that struck this team. No Jeffrey Simmons out there today. No Adam Humphreys out there today. No Corey Davis out there today. No Christian Fulton out there today. And we still whipped those jabronis. It was a Tuesday night SmackDown Live for the world to see. And now everyone knows who to look out for in the AFC. People! People! The Ravens are 4-1. and one. The Chiefs are 4-1. and one. And the Titans are 4 and 0. Oh, this is one of those days. Now, tonight, where I can't complain. I, I mean, I'm going to complain about some stuff because, hello, it's me. Um, but I had to complain about, I mean, but I, for the most part, I'm going to be so positive today. By the way, in case you're wondering why I'm not live tonight, so finally YouTube made me convert to this new live streaming format. It's terrible. Every time I try to do it, I get lag. I'm going to try to figure it out. I'm going to have to upgrade equipment or something because it's just not compatible with my stuff. So for now, I'll have to just do post-game videos right after. But within 30 minutes, it'll be up from, the, uh, from when the game ends. So not live today. Hopefully, I figure out this live streaming crap that YouTube has now pushed. It's awful. It's terrible. It's not an improvement at all. But yeah, we'll figure that out. So where do we begin today? with this game, which again was not perfect, but damn it, it was good. And after all the negative publicity that this team was suffering throughout the entire last two weeks with this coronavirus nonsense, it was nice to go out and beat a football team. So where shall we begin? Well, let's begin with my MJ takes of the week. Oh, that is not the picture that we want. And let's start with some of the things that we saw in this game. Well, Malcolm Butler must be on the nice list. Okay, apparently he's been nice in 2020 because he got some gifts from Santa Claus today. Santa Claus being Josh Allen. Josh Allen gifted this man two interceptions. Well, I'll say one interception. The other one was gifted by Andre Roberts, who was the intended receiver on the first interception. I mean, I don't know what Malcolm Butler did, but hey, right time, right place. And look, he had a great return on the second one to set us up for another touchdown. So Malcolm Butler 
overall played well. I mean, yes, he still let up his catches because it's Malcolm Butler. He's going to let up catches. But obviously, if you come down with two interceptions, it's a nice game for him. How about A.J. Brown? Oh, my God. You can feel it. It's electric. Right now with A.J. Brown. Let me go on camera real quick for that. You can feel it. It's electric. Oh, A.J. Brown. This guy was back in action. And he reminded us why we love this man. Why we're so excited not only of his performance this upcoming season, but for seasons to come. While we finally feel that we actually have a good wide receiver in Tennessee. I mean, this is something we don't normally feel. <laughs> and this is actually something we could feel. And I still feel that about Corey Davis, too. So we may actually have two good wide receivers in Tennessee. So that's nice to know. And I just saw that it was the one significant drive. I want to say it was in the second quarter where A.J. Brown got three, four tough, strong catches. He even got one that was a defensive pass interference. He didn't care. Showing us that, yes, last year he had the big plays, right? He had the plays that he would turn from a 15, 20-yard catch to a 50-yard touchdown. But not only can I do that, hey, I can catch this touchdown fade. Hey, I can get these first downs because that's what we need to see from him. Can he get these difficult first downs? Sometimes he'll struggle when the cornerbacks are physical with him. He did not struggle with Josh Norman today. So I thought today was a significant development. In the A.J. Brown progression, and I love seeing that today, A.J. Brown is back and he is sliding. You can feel it. It is electric with Mr. A.J. Brown. Now, let's go a little negative. Can we get off the field on third down? I mean, what was going on on third down today? And it was incredibly frustrating in the first quarter where the Bills went, you know, third and 10, third and 10, third and six, you know, convert, 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 30, 15, convert. It was absurd. I, I don't know why we can't get off the field on third down. And it was the same thing every time, essentially. We were in zone coverage and then we were getting enough of a pass rush. Josh Allen could sit in the pocket, and then our quarterback's going to recover well enough. That happened again and again and again and again. Now, the one thing I will grant my Vrabel is it worked when we were up. And that was true last year, too, because this is similar to what we did last year with Dean Pease. So we'll run this zone coverage a lot. And, you know, when we're up, it's great because it forces the offense to take five to six to seven minutes to even score if they do. Because remember, that's what happened to the Bills twice in this game in the second half that really won us the game. It took the Bills so long to go down the field, one of those drives ending the interception. The other one I want to say, what was it, ended in a touchdown. But it still took too damn long. There was only eight minutes left in the game at that point, eight or nine minutes left in the game. So it works when we're in that position. Now, I don't want to play that way the entire game because, you know, the Minnesota Vikings, they ripped us to shreds. Kirk Cousins and Justin Jefferson ripped us to shreds whenever we were implementing that strategy there. So, yeah, I, that's the one point of contention I have there. But when we're up, okay, it works. It was frustrating, though. Can we get off the field in third down? We couldn't do it. You know, the third and 15, that was bad, especially in that first quarter. So we just – and again – I look at our defense, and, you know, definitely we could use improvements personnel-wise, but I just don't think they're playing as a very cohesive unit overall, especially in the first half. They didn't look very strong in the second half, though. Second half, they looked very strong, so we'll, we'll get to that momentarily. But, yeah, that was just one of my early notes that was very frustrating. Um, our run blocking stinks. It's awful. It's bad. And, and people are still going to, you know, clam on Derrick Henry. You know, Derrick Henry's lost a step. Derrick Henry isn't playing well. I mean, which of these running backs is playing well? Like, like Derrick Ted Evans, he averaged six yards a carry. He had two carries, okay? Uh, Jeremy McNichols had nine carries for 28 yards, three yards a carry. Boom, same number as Derrick Henry. The run blocking stinks, okay? It just stinks. It's not there. Uh, Taylor Luan was in and out, in and out of the lineup, but I think he goes beyond him. I think Ben Jones is a blocking well up front, I think. Uh, Nate Davis is a blocking well up front. What is new there? Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I just don't think it's there right now in terms of the run blocking, and our entire run game is – you know, being worsened because of it. But I saw, saw, I still saw Derrick Henry being tough and making tough plays. Boom. He had the two touchdowns. He had the big step forward to Josh Norman. He had other, some other couple strong runs in there. There's just not open holes for him. We're just not getting him out in open space, period. I, I don't think run, uh, the run blocking is there right now. And, and maybe it's just something that, you know, we get better as the year goes on, as it gets colder, I guess, I think, I hope. Because although we don't need it right now because Ryan Tanner's is playing so well and he's the next note, it'd be nice to see. So speaking of Ryan Tannehill, 
is he not the best Tennessee Titan that we have? Is Ryan Tannehill maybe not the best Tennessee Titan we have? I mean, he's, he might be a better football player than Derrick Henry, Taylor Lewan, everyone at this point. He's the best Tennessee Titan at this point. He's carrying this football team, period. Period. I mean, he's had one, you know, mediocre game this year. He's been great outside of that, and today he was fantastic. Ryan Tannehill is incredibly inc consistent. I don't know what the Miami Dolphins were doing letting this man go. I blame it all on Adam Gase. So, hey, some people might want to call for Sam Darnold because yeah, apparently Adam Gase will ruin the hell out of your career because Ryan Tannehill is an MVP candidate. Now, it's going to be very difficult to beat Russell Wilson this year, but guess what? He was better than the other number 17 out on the field today. So he definitively passed Josh Allen in the MVP discussion. Aaron Rodgers will be difficult to pass. Russell Wilson will be difficult to pass. And right now, you could even argue... Big Ben might be, like, right there with him and maybe some others. But, you know, I think he's in the discussion. It's a difficult discussion. But he's in that discussion, and he should absolutely be a pro bowler. Yeah, it's tough. With Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes almost cinching up pro bowl spots in the AFC and Deshaun Watson. I mean, Jesus, that's a one, two, three punch right there. It's hard to break through that three. He's a pro bowl quarterback, at least, you know, play-wise. It'll be hard to actually make it because, Gigi, you're talking about Mahomes, Jackson, and Watson. I mean, that's one, two, three locked up. And one of them make the Super Bowl, maybe us, hopefully. Uh, and then, not Watson, Jesus, get him out of here. Roethlisberger's there, you know, Carr's been playing well, but uh, Tannehill's playing better than him. But Tannehill's playing fantastic. I mean, you, you just got to give it up to this man. What a touchdown pass to A.J. Brown. What a final touchdown to John Smith. What a rushing touchdown that he had. I mean, four total touchdowns today. The guy was fantastic. The guy was everything that she wanted and more, okay? Never again will we discuss that number eight because we now have number 17 in Ryan freaking Tannehill um, who made his wife proud on her birthday, which was yesterday, made her happy today with a victory uh, for Lauren Tannehill. John was still reliable. Two touchdowns today. Again, looking more and more like the Lenny Walker. Now, he did have the one drop, which I was not happy about. But he did have another play that was negated due to a penalty where he basically caught a first down. Yeah, it was a first down. He rushed for that first down. Um, but then it was called back due to, like, a hold or block in the back or whatever they were called. They were calling all kinds of crazy stuff today. They called, like, some double team on a, on a special team. I'm like, since when, when all of a sudden is it illegal to – for a double team block. Is that not just blocking? What are you talking about, double team block? Ah, it was ridiculous, some of the referees today. Uh, anyway, so John o. Smith is still consistent. Love seeing that. And look, you got to give Mike Vrabel some props. Now, we're not going to give him too many props because he's still Mike Vrabel. But look, uh, and the defense is still, you know, the defense. But, man, he had this team ready to go today. I mean, you have to give Mike Vrabel that. He had this defense, or not this defense, this team, ready to go today. Despite all of the pandemic, COVID-19 nonsense, despite no in-person meetings, despite no practice, despite all the drama, he had the message strong. You better show up ready to play. We are still showing up ready to play. We are claiming this game as our own. That was the message. It was loud and it was clear and it made its way through the locker room. It permeated and it resulted in a win tonight for the Titans, period. This was our best performance of the season. This was our best performance, I'd argue, since Baltimore, maybe even better, eh, no, since Baltimore last playoffs. And it was terrific. I, I mean, this was what we want. This, this is the team that we fell in love with at the end of last season. And now we're seeing it this early in the season. And now I'm telling you, man, I'm getting a little excited. Because, man, now we're talking. As the Chiefs look vulnerable, as the Ravens look vulnerable, we are undefeated in this league. The Steelers are as well, and they're in the AFC, and we have to keep our eyes on them. The Browns are respectable 4-1. and one. There's a lot of strong AFC teams right now. The Colts are 3-2. and two. They just lost. We still have to win our division against them. I mean, those are seven strong teams right now in the AFC. You're talking about the Rapes. You're talking about the Chiefs. You're talking about us. The Bills that we just beat, so we have to worry about them too much anymore. The Patriots are still in it. The Browns and the Steelers. Is that seven or eight? Even the Raiders a little bit. So there's some people in the field. But we keep doing whatever it takes to win, and today we did a little bit more. 
So excuse me as I feel comfortable and confident in this win. Is there anything else I want to say? Well, um, outside of just AJ Brown and Johnny Smith, Anthony Ferk, sir, I thought did a good job. Shout out to my boy Ferk. Khalif Raymond had a couple nice catches, including a nice first down when we needed it. The 20 yard gainer, I love seeing that. Defensively, I will say, I thought this was Harold Landry's best game. He obviously had the sack, but I also noticed another uh, crucial tackle that he had made. He also missed Josh Allen for a critical first down. But I also thought, also thought Harold Landry had another also a uh, pass rush where he ended up like on his back and he almost got Josh Allen feet. But I thought this was his best day rushing the passer by far. So it was nice to see Harold Landry actually step up in terms of that department because he is not elevated to the Pro Bowl level. A lot of us anticipated that he would. Way better run defense today. I will say that, actually. So, although the defense is still struggling to me, I, I thought the run defense was better. We bottled up. Devin Singletary well. Rashawn Evans was playing well to me in the department. J.R. Brown was improved in that department as well. Kenny Vicara missed a couple of tackles, which I didn't love. But Kevin Byrne, I thought, was back today. I thought he was doing everything he needed to do. He was playing over the top. Nothing was allowed over the top. And he was coming down and breaking up passes. I thought Kevin Byrne was fantastic. Almost came down with an interception or two. Kevin Byrne was fantastic. This was a Pro Bowl level play that we expect from Kevin Byrne. So I liked the improvement there from Kevin Byrne. And overall, our defense was better today. And this was without Christian Fulton. And look, I think a lot of it has to do to Adore Jackson, who I barely noticed, actually, out there today. But I think Malcolm Butler, definitely, you know, his two interceptions helped. Chris Jackson definitely did his thing. Let's see, did Adore Jackson play? Let me actually check if he played. Maybe he didn't play because I didn't see him. I, I thought I was, I was told he was playing today. And whatever. But I'll, I'll, say, I'll talk about the people that I noticed. Uh, outside of those guys... I mean, that's about it. Yeah, there's no way Adore Jackson played, actually. Never mind. Forget I said that. Clowney, eh, I mean, he had like two pressures, maybe three. I don't know. We're being told that he's rushing well. I look at the tape, and then I'll, I'll look at the tape, and, it'll, and I'll say, okay, he's rushing well, but can you, can you give us a little something? Can you give us a sack? Can you give us a big tackle for loss? Something? Can we get a little something that we can see? Just something? Is that too much to ask? No. You know, I, I'm not big on stats, but, I mean, it'd just be nice to see when it comes to kind of this point because when you're paying $15 million, and I knew he was never going to come in here and get 10 sacks. But, yeah, come on now. He should be giving us something, you know, just a, a, a tackle for loss, a big run stuff, you know, something. He's getting a lot of running backs from behind, which I like seeing. But, yeah, Dory Jackson was out tonight. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought. I don't know why someone told me he was in because I didn't see it. All right, so outside of that, you know, for the Bills, as far as the Bills were concerned, I guess some Bills fans might want to watch this and have some and want some thoughts on their team. Look, I thought today was a bad day for Josh Allen, but I'm not going to let this game cloud my judging. I saw Josh Allen pretty much this entire season. I've been paying attention to the Bills. He's been playing well. Today was not his best day. Uh, that is certain. But I think, you know, obviously the dr huge drop on Andre Roberts to basically gift the interception to Malcolm Butler, that definitely hurt. That made him lose his confidence. And then the last interception, Malcolm Butler was just got awful. But he had a touchdown that was, like, negated. Then he got another touchdown in the first quarter. Like, I thought he was playing pretty well, honestly. He had made some mistakes. He definitely missed some throws. But I'm not concerned about Josh Allen. And that's, that's saying something because I was not a big Josh Allen fan coming out of college. But there was no run game for you today. You obviously missed John Brown. To me, you'll be back and better in the next game. We, we, were, just, we, we were just, for some reason, just super motivated today by Mike Vrabel and, and all the adversity that we had faced, and it's just crazy to me. I mean, I was not expecting this. You people can call me a hater. That's fine. Uh, I did not pick us in this game. Hell, I thought the Bills were going to win by 10 points, I think was my prediction. So this just changes things for me moving forward. Uh, you know, I already had confidence in this team. I have us as an 11-5 win team. Um, 11 and 5 team. Now we look forward to the schedule. I mean, next game we have the Houston Texans. Now we cannot sleep on this team. We cannot sleep on this team. This is Deshaun Watson who has given us hell. Then we have the Houston Texans, not the Houston Texans. Then we have the Pittsburgh Steelers, and then we travel to Cincinnati to face the Cincinnati Bengals. Okay? Then we host the Bears. Then we host the Colts. I think this is a very manageable schedule. There is no one at this schedule where I'm shaking in my boots. And then now, even going to the Ravens after that, I'm not afraid about going to the Ravens. Now, I think it's a difficult matchup, don't get me wrong, but we've had success against Lamar Jackson. This is what I needed to see. People are like, oh, my God, you're so critical of the team because this is what this team is capable of. And when they go out and when they show it and when they do it, guess what? I'm happy. I'm, I'm starting to talk Super Bowl. I'm starting to talk AFC. We can have those conversations. 
When we come out and we look as bad as we did against the Jaguars, who stink right now, and the Vikings, who their record is not as indicative as how, how good of a team that they are, but they also are not a good team right now. I'm going to be frustrated. Oh, and the Denver Broncos, too. Like, we have not beaten one team that was going to be over 500, even 500 by season's end. We now have. The Bills will still be a 10-11 win team, and we beat them. Will be one of the five or six losses that the Bills had in 2020. This is significant. And this is now what we need to continue, this trend. And now let's get, come on, let's quarantine. Let's stop going to TSU. Let's stop hanging out with the kids from Fisk University. Everyone stay inside, quarantine. I don't want to see any more COVID-19 cases because we got to get Corey Davis back. We got to get Jeffrey Simmons back. And then, people, people, please, if we get rolling, with how bad the Chiefs defense looked against the Raiders, with Lamar Jackson choking as he always does? Wait a damn minute. Is 2020 the year for the Tennessee Titans? This Tuesday night might foretell us. So with that said, those are my thoughts on this Tennessee Titans victory over the Buffalo Bills. What are your thoughts? Comment down below. I want to know. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, comment, and most importantly, to subscribe. And until next time, this has been MJ of Sports Fan Entertainment, and I'm out. See you all later.